I don't know what it is about CRTs and horror games, but they go together so well. I'm sure that the combination of the two has something to do with how horror games origins are synonymous with the PS1 era, and that era is synonymous with CRT since that was just what TVs were back then. The blacker blacks and the crunchiness of the picture just does something, and that combined with the screen glare that forces you to play at night just makes horror games on a CRT good. So I'm gonna tell you about five of my favorites to play on my CRT. Let's go. You're doing good. I'd have thought when you get to the other side, you'd finally be given all the answers. But hunting my killer, all I'm finding are more questions. Murdered soul suspect stars Ronan, a man who we see get pushed out of a window and die. However, Ronan doesn't die die, he instead becomes a ghost and must solve his own murder and reunite with his wife who has died some time ago in the afterlife. They must reunite in the afterlife. It's a criminally underrated horror game that has the gameplay that Deadly Premonition should have had. Gameplay alternates between investigations where the player must collect clues and match them up and piece together what happened at the scene. And outside of those, the player explores a semi-open world and are occasionally pursued by demons. Demons that are fought by hiding from them and performing stealth kills. It's the perfect little cinematic game for an evening in front of the CRT. However, it's text heavy and the font size can't be changed and the text is tiny and white on a black background, so occasionally a little hard to make out. It's just that I don't notice it a lot since I've played this game a lot, but it's still definitely worthy of a go. Right on cue, bubbling to the surface from untold depths, the horrors come. This time, a silent vow. No more. Alan Wake American Nightmare, the epilogue to Alan Wake proper, and the prologue to Alan Wake 2, which of course is a game that has yet to happen. It released exclusively on XBLA of all things, and while it is smaller in scope than its disc based prequel, it's still a fantastic experience. Set after the events of Alan Wake and the DLCs, Alan has managed to gain control of a bit of the nightmare he's stuck in, and here he will face off against his evil doppelganger, Mr. Scratch, and save his wife or girlfriend, whose name is... it's not Laura? It's Alice. Yeah, she's in the game, she's in the first game for like 20 minutes and it's been a while since I last played, so sorry. Alice, her name is Alice. Yes. The gameplay from the first game returns and has been expanded upon by including wacky items that the setting now allows. You're either walking from point A to point B, fighting shadows or solving puzzles. And Alan Wake's minimalist approach to UI design and emphasis on communicating to the player how to proceed and overcome through visual and audio cues means that there isn't a lot of text here that can be hard to read on a CRT. So it's a perfect game to enjoy in front of your best glowing friend. Dead Rising Case Zero is a special game to me. It's from those twilight years of major publisher experimentation and it really shouldn't exist. It's a prologue to the game Dead Rising 2 and stars Chuck Green, the hero of that game. 
It takes place some time before Dead Rising 2 and follows Chuck and his infected daughter as they stop for gas in a small town on their way to Vegas. A setting that we are in my videos very familiar with. The curious thing about this is that I think that Rising 2 takes place in the fictional Fortune City. But I guess what the game is could explain that, because Dead Rising K0 is a standalone Xbox 360 title released a month before Dead Rising 2 and acts as that game's demo. But it isn't just like they took a slice of Dead Rising 2 and released it standalone. No, this thing is its own game. And while you can take your save data and import your leveled K0 Chuck into Dead Rising 2, I don't think that any of what happens in the prologue is referenced at all, down to the city that Chuck is heading for in this game not being the city that he ends up in in Dead Rising 2. But it's great, it's its own little standalone adventure and it has its own self-contained 4-hour story, its own world, its own items and its own gimmick. See, Chuck's truck gets stolen in the opening minutes of the game, and as Chuck searches the town looking for some breaks to stave off his daughter's infection, he comes across a broken bike that he then takes back to the garage where the two are holed up, and the game is about looking for parts to fix that bike and then getting out of Dodge, and it's a really great little game. It's a pint-sized Dead Rising adventure, and if you were a lad or a lass in 2010 and you were wondering if Dead Rising 2 was gonna be a game for you, then this one serves as a fantastic entry point into the series, and a cheap way to figure out if you're gonna invest in the sequel or not. And it looks fantastic on a CRT. It came out at just the right point in the 360's lifespan to be a good-looking CRT game. And the games that came out prior to 2010, during when CRTs were still prominent, look like shite on the thing. But games after 2010 have more clean graphics and higher internal resolution and look better. And K-Zero's more simple visuals, which I'm sure came about as a result of budget, work to this game's advantage. Together with its love for the yellow and red sides of the color spectrum. And on to another cult favorite of mine, Resident Evil Revelations 2. I don't like Resident Evil, I think it's stupid, but I have played and attempted to enjoy most of the mainline entries into the series. I like 4, 5 and 6, and I really enjoy the part of Revelation 1 that's just Jill on the ship, but unfortunately that only takes up about one third of that game. This however, the second Revelation game, is one of my absolute favorites. Set aside the fact that the Revelation series is supposed to reveal some secrets about the lore of the mainline games, and never fucking does, I still like this one. Which doesn't reveal anything about the mainline game, it just sets up a self-contained mystery and then reveals that. And that is some dumb shenanigan stupidity and I love the game for that. The main campaign stars Jill and Moira who wake up on a Russian prison zombie island and have to make their way through the broken down facility and fight off unspeakable horrors in their way. And then it also stars Barry Burden and a tiny girl, who then follow their tracks six months later and they also have to fight off unspeakable horrors. The neat thing is that the two narratives have their own gameplay tweaks. Jill and Moira's bits are very back to basics RE but in a modern sense. It's fight or flight decision gameplay where you constantly have to make the choice to fight the zombies or run away from them, and they're also puzzles. The other part is very much RE4, 5 and 6, as Barry is heavily armed and can just gun down everything in his way. And because Jill and Mora solved the puzzles and made their way through the traps and deactivated them 6 months ago, Barry doesn't have to deal much with that. And I think it's a neat little in-universe way to set up the two gameplay styles, and it tickles that part of my brain that really appreciates that it really appreciates good gameplay design and it looks great on a CRT there are some journal entries that are a bit hard to make out on the CRT but it's Resident Evil so it doesn't fucking matter 
RE games are dumb and everything is so easy to get and the game puts a big button prompt on the screen every time you need to perform any action that isn't boop boop shooting anything anyways so it's quite playable even on the smallest of screens and before we get to my final and my favorite CRT horror game pick I think we need to head out into the great outdoors Today I feel like going for a paddle and a dive, so here we are at the western coast. There's something extremely unnerving and simultaneously extremely comforting about being underwater. It tickles that part of my brain in the same way that horror games do. It calms me, that total isolation. And speaking of isolation alien isolation <laughs> This is the perfect horror game for CRT. Isolation stars Amanda Ripley, a hardcore lady like her mom, who receives news that the flight recorder for the ship that her mother was on, the ship from the first movie that we learned were lost in the second movie, has been found. And it is aboard the Sevastopol station, a city slash mining facility slash post office out in deep space. Ripley reluctantly agrees to accompany two Whalen Yutani reps to the station. However, since this is an alien game, something is not quite right at the station. The dry dock is blown up, so the ship cannot dock, and this forces the team of three to spacewalk into an airlock. However, on the way there, there is an explosion and they get separated. And Amanda enters the station alone, and then the game begins proper. From here on out, it is a terrifying 14 hour journey where Amanda will battle aliens, rogue androids and the crazy isolated inhabitants of the station. And last but not least, the broken station itself. Alien in Isolation is the most beautiful game that I have ever played. There is an unrivaled attention to detail that no other game comes close to achieving. Nothing in this game is here by accident. It's all on purpose. And you can tell the developer cared about every aspect of the game. The sound design, the level design, the clutter in the levels, the movement, the peeing controls, the atmosphere, everything. It is a fantastic game overall, but it's even more enhanced on the CRT, where the retro 70s future is exactly right at fucking home. It's like it was meant to be displayed on this thing. Even the loading screens in the game itself have a crusty VHS filter applied. It is a perfect CRT horror game and an almost perfect horror game on its own.
Imagine a television individually built around an advanced 30AX tube. Designed for today and tomorrow. With individually housed speakers for superior sound. and a picture that looks so natural. The new O2 series from Bang & Olufsen. It's everything you dreamed TV could be. So that was five pretty good horror games on their own, but enhanced even further when viewed on a cathode ray tube TV. I hope you really like my picks. And if you have any good CRT horror game picks yourself, be sure to tell me in the comments or on Twitter or on Discord. Links are in the description. Until then, bye bye!